So the Jasmine Revolution happened in Tunisia. And um, to, tomorrow, January 26, uh, 2015, would be the one-year anniversary of their constitution. So if you compare the Tunisian Revolution with the Egyptian Revolution, then you know you will see that the Tunisian Revolution was successful, whereas the, the Egyptian one was not. And there's the saying, you got to break some eggs in order to make some omelets. So those who had died during the Tunisian Revolution will be known as martyrs to the revolution because that revolution was successful. But for Egypt, the martyrs to the revolution, which was about 900 dead bodies, 900 dead souls, those were eggs broken for no reason. And, um, and so a lot of times it has to do with whether or not the uh, campaign is successful, whether the revolution is successful, if the martyrs to the revolution will be remembered. Um, if uh, the three people in Selma hadn't have died, uh, you know, and uh, MLK didn't get integration, if MLK didn't have successes, then those three people who died in Selma might might have been forgotten, and that's um, you know, that's a damn shame. So the reason why I'm comparing the two is because today is the Egyptian Revolution, a four-year anniversary of the Egyptian Revolution. So. We have a Tunisian revolution uh, that was successful because of the Constitution, so they were able to consolidate it. So let's talk about some of the events that uh, culminated in the Tun Tunisian revolution. So it actually, it all started out with the self immunization of Muhammad Bouazizi. So 26-year-old Muhammad Bouazizi had been the sole income earner in his extended family of eight. He had mouths to feed. Muhammad Bouazizi, he operated a vegetable cart for seven years in City Bouzaid, 190 miles south of Tunis, the capital. On uh, December 17, 2010, a policewoman confiscated his cart and produce. Bouazizi, who had such an event happen to him before, tried to pay the 10 diner fine. In response, the policewoman insulted his deceased father and slapped him. The policewoman, Fadi uh, Hamdi, tells a markedly different story. Humiliated, Bu Alzizi then went to the pro provincial headquarters in an attempt to complain loudly to, or to, to complain to local municipality officials and to have his produce returned. He was refused an audience without alerting his family at 11.30 a.m. Within an hour of the initial confrontation, Bu Alzizi returned to the headquarters, doused himself with a flammable liquid and set himself on fire. Public outrage grew uh, quickly grew over the incident, leading to protests. This immoliz, immolation and the subsequent heavy-handed response by the police to peaceful marchers caused riots the next day in Sidi Bouzad that went largely unnoticed, although social media sites such as Facebook and YouTube featured images of police dispersing youths who attacked shop windows and damaged cars. Bouazizi subsequently transferred to a hospital near Tunis in an attempt to quell the unrest. President Zain El Abidine bin Ali visited Bouazizi in a hospital in December 28, 2010, and Bouazizi died January 4, 2011. So, because of this, you know, this uh, vegetable man, this, this guy who's selling vegetables out of his cart um, for seven years in city Bouzide. He lit himself on fire. He, he they took his cart, they took his protest or took his produce, and then uh, insulted his dead father and then smacked him, you know. And uh, and he was like, "Fuck his life," you know. Uh, the biggest I think comparison with uh, Tunisia and the United States was that Tunisia had a high middle, let's see, a a big number of heavily educated unemployed class. So they had lots of people who were uh, heavily educated, so they expected more out of life, and um, and they weren't finding anything. And so I, I see that in America. So um, let's take a look at some of this top stuff here. So the events began December 18, 2010, and then led to the ousting of longtime President Zainal Abidine Ben Ali in January 2011. Ben Ali had been in there since 1987, so he had been in there for almost 24 years. Now, that's not like 30 years of Mitch McConnell, but it's 24 years, which is a really long-ass time. Uh, George Washington stepped down after eight years. The demonstrations were precipitated by high unemployment, food inflation, and corruption, lack of political freedoms like freedom of speech, and living 
uh, poor living conditions. The protests constituted the most dramatic wave of social and political unrest in Tunisia in three decades and have resulted in scores of deaths and injuries, most of which were the result of action by police and security forces against demonstrators. The protests were sparked by the self-immolation of Mohamed Bouazizi on December 17, 2010 and led to the ousting of President Zainal Abedin Ben Ali 28 days later on January 14, 2011 when he officially resigned after fleeing to Saudi Arabia, ending 23 years in power. Labor unions were said to be an integral part of the protest. The protest inspired similar actions throughout the Arab world. So because of what happened in the Jasmine Revolution, what happened in Tunisia, that's, uh, that started the Arab Spring. The Arab Spring all throughout the world, right? Following Bin Ali's departure from the country, a state of emergency was declared. The Constitutional Court reaffirmed Fouad Mi Baza's acting president under Article 57 of the Constitution. A caretaker coalition government was also created, including members of Bin Ali's party, the Constitutional Democratic Rally, and key ministries, while including other opposition figures and other ministries with elections to take place within 60 days. However, five newly appointed non CDR ministries resigned almost immediately in Daly Street. Protests in Tunis and other towns around Tunisia continued, demanding the new government have no CDR members and that the CDR itself be disbanded. On January 27th, the Prime Minister Mohamed Gunachi reshuffled the government, removing all former CDR members other than himself. February 6th, the new Interior Minister suspended all party activities of the CDR. The Constitutional Democratic Rally, Ben Ali's people, citing security reasons, the party was dissolved as protesters had demanded on March 9, 2011. Following further public protest, Ganauchi himself resigned February 27th, and Benji Kad uh, Essebsi became prime minister. Two other members of the interim government resigned the following day, March 3, 2011. The president announced the elections for the Constituent Assembly, which were held October 23, 2011 with the Islamist Inanda party winning the plurality of seats. So that's important to know now because uh, Benji Kaid, uh, a Essebsi, um, president, or the, he's the president now. Essebsi was elected the president. So he was carrying, you know, he was in control of the um, constituent assembly. So that's how, you know, if uh, Kentucky was to get their own constitution, that's what Kentucky would have to do is start a constituent uh, constituent assembly with representatives from you know every county and um, and then create you know a constitutional convention out of that or every district or you know every senate district or representative district because there's a hundred representative districts and 38 senate districts but 120 county districts so you need you know individuals from throughout the state they all go gather they write the thing and then once the thing is written it gets turned to the people in order to pass it or not pass it and um, and then it goes from there so the constitution of the Tunisian Republic I want to read some of this because it's um, fascinating stuff this is what the you know um, the end uh, the culmination of all the revolutionaries hard work has um, came down to this document which is going to be the foundation um, the doc, the founding, you know, do, document, the founding foundation for the entire new nation of the Tunisian people. So it starts out with, in the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate. So right away, it's sounding very much like American constitutions. Um, preamble, we, the representatives of the Tunisian people, members of the National Constituent Assembly, take a pride in the struggle of our people to gain independence and to build the state to eliminate autocracy and to achieve its free will as a real realization of the objectives of the revolution of freedom and dignity the revolution of December 17 2010 to January 14 2011 out of loyalty to the blood of our blessed martyrs and the sacrifices of Tunisian men and women over generations and to break with opposition injustice and corruption expressing our people's commitment to the teachings of Islam and its open and moderate objectives to sublime human values and the principles of universal human rights inspired by our civilizational heritage accumulated over successful epochs of our history and from our enlightened reformist movements that are based on the foundations of our Islamic Arab identity and to human civilization's achievements and adhering to the national gains achieved by our people. With a view to build a participatory democratic or republican regime under the framework of a civil state where sovereignty belongs to the people through peaceful rotation of power through free elections 
and on the principle of the separation of powers and balance between them, in which the right to association based on pluralism, neutrality of administration, and good governance constitute the basis of political competition, and where the state guarantees supremacy of the law, respect for freedoms and human rights, independence of the judiciary, equal uh, equality of rights and duties between all male and female citizens, and fairness between all regions. Based on the dignified status of humankind enhancing our cultural and civilizational affiliation to the Arab Islamic nation on the basis of national unity that is based on citizenship, brotherhood, solidarity, and social justice with a view to supporting Maghreb unity as a step towards achieving Arab unity, integrating with the Muslim and African nations, and cooperating with the peoples of the world, supporting the oppressed everywhere and the people's right to self-determination for just liberation movements at the forefront of which is the Palestinian liberation movement and standing against all forms of occupation and racism. Being aware of the necessity of contributing to a secure climate and the protection of the environment to ensure the sustainability of our natural resources and the sustainability of a safe life for coming generations and achieving the will of the people to be the makers of their own history while believing in knowledge, work, and creativity as sublime human values, seeking to become pioneers and aspiring to contribute to civilization on the basis of the independence of national decision-making, world peace, and human solidarity. We, in the name of the people, draft this constitution with God's blessing. So it's a pretty powerful um, preamble, very inspiring, very exciting. Uh, cha uh, chapter 1, General Principles, Article 1. Tunisia is a free, independent, and sovereign state. Islam is its religion, Arabic its language, and the republic its system. This article not, cannot be amended. So, the Islam is its official religion, and Arabic is its official language, and then republic is its official system, which is... Um, I don't know. I think I, I take this document to be more of a secular state because the um, I'm not for sure though. To be more of a secular document because Islam, I don't know. It's the official religion, but if can you not be Islamic? Are you allowed to be another religion? Is there freedom of religion? Will they talk about that? So we'll find out. Arabic, its language and republic, its system. I don't have an issue with. Um, you know, Kentucky has the state coffee tree. And then the the marigold and the flat, you know, the state flower and the state um, uh, bird is the cardinal. So I mean, is it is it like that? The official bird for Kentucky is the cardinal, but does that make it? You're not. It's not illegal to you know like other birds. So Article Two, Tunisia is a civil state that is based on citizenship, the will of the people, and the supremacy of the law. This article cannot be amended. The people possess sovereignty and are sources of all powers, which they shall exercise through their freely elected representatives or by referendum. Kentucky's got an article that allow that says revolution is okay. Um, article 4, the flag of the Tunisian Republic is red and bears in its center a white circle in which the inscribed a, is inscribed a five-point star surrounded by a red crescent as provided for by law. The national anthem of the Tunisian Republic is defenders of the homeland. In accordance with the provisions defined by law, the motto of the Tunisian Republic is freedom, dignity, justice, order. Article 5, the Republic of Tunisia is part of the Arab Maghreb and shall work to achieve its unity and take all measures to ensure its real, realization. The state shall protect religion, guarantee freedom of belief and conscience in religious practices, and ensure the impartiality of mosque and the place of worship away from partisan instrumentalization. The state shall commit to spreading the values of moderation and tolerance, protecting sanctities and preventing attacks on them, just as it shall commit to preventing calls of takfir, calling another Muslim an unbeliever, and incitement to hatred and violence into confronting them. So that says freedom of religion, you know, uh, right there. But I think by making it the official religion, it's going to be an Islamic state, Tunisia is. The family is the basic structure of society, and the state shall protect it. Youth are an active force in building the homeland. The state shall provide the necessary conditions to develop the capacities of youth and realize their potential and strives to give them responsibility and expand their contribution to social, economic, cultural, and political development. Protecting Article 9, protecting the unity of the homeland and defending its sanctity is a sacred duty for all uh, citizens. Military service shall be a duty to be regulated by regulations and conditions established by law. 
Article 10, paying taxes and public contributions is an obligation in accordance with a fair and equitable system. The state shall put in place the mechanisms necessary to ensure the collection of taxes and combating the tax evasion and fiscal fraud. The state shall ensure the proper use of public funds and take the necessary measures to optimize its spending according to national economic priorities and shall work to prevent corruption and all that could undermine national sovereignty. Article 11. Persons who occupy the post of President of the Republic or Prime Minister, membership of the government, membership of the Chamber of the People's Deputies, membership of any independent constitutional body or any higher function shall declare their earnings according to the regulations established by law. Article 12. The state shall seek to achieve sound use of nat natural resources balanced between regions, social justice, and sustainable uh, development with reference to development indicators and in accordance with the principle of positive discrimination. Article 13. Natural resources are the property of the Tunisian people and the state exercises sovereignty over them on their behalf. Investment contracts related to these resources shall be submitted to the competent committee of the Chamber of People's Deputies. Uh, the state shall commit to support decentralization and to adopt it throughout the country within the framework of the unity of the state. So they're saying decentralized, but they're also saying state in the same sentence, which are, you know, um, contradictory. Public administration shall, shall ser serve citizens in a public interest, shall be organized and operate in accordance with the principles of impartiality, equality, con continuity of provision of public services, and the rule of transparency, integrity, efficiency, and accountability. A lot of good words. A lot of good ideas floating in this document. The state shall ensure the neutrality of institutional um, educational institutions away from partisan instrumental and instrumentalization, which is genius, um, but it also provides for education. It provides for school. Only the state may establish the armed forces and internal security forces according to the law to serve the public interest. The Article 18, the National Army is a Republican army and is an armed military force based on discipline that is composed and structurally organized in accordance with the law. The Army undertakes the duty of defending the nation, its independence, and its territorial integrity. It must remain entirely impartial. The na National Army supports the civil authorities in accordance with the provisions set out by law. The National Security Force is a Republican security force charged with maintaining security and public order, protecting individuals, institutions, and property, and law enforcement while ensuring respect for freedoms and total impartiality. Article 20. International agreements approved and ratified by the Chamber of the People's Deputies shall be superior to laws and inferior to the Constitution. So they're saying the legislature is above the laws but inferior to the Constitution. The Constitution is the founding document. This is the main document, right? You change the rules to monopoly and only you know the rules, then you're going to be a, uh, a champion in monopoly, right? or chess or any game or any type of thing if you know the rules so I think everybody needs to know the rules and then we need to have one document from which those rules come from because if you have you know a constitution here a constitution there and it's amended and gutted and revised and the laws are changed you know it's not really one document and um, the laws of Kentucky just go on and on and on and on you could find contradicting laws all the time you could see, get some laws that say one thing and then another set of laws that say a whole nother thing so a constitutional convention is desired um article 21st all citizens male and female alike have equal rights and duties and are equal before the law without any discrimination the state guarantees to citizens individual and collective rights and provides them with conditions to lead a dignified life dignity they keep talking about dignity the right to life is sacred and shall not be prejudiced except in the extreme cases regulated by law. Article 23, the state shall protect human dignity and physical integrity and shall prohibit psychological and physical torture. Crimes of torture are imprescriptible. Article 24, the state shall protect the right to a private life and the sanctity of domiciles. The confidentiality of correspondence and communications and personal information. Every citizen shall have the right to choose a place of residence and to free movement within the country and shall have the right to leave the country. Article 25, no citizen shall be stripped of his or her nationality, exiled, extradited, or prevented from returning to his or her country. Article 26, the right to political asylum shall be guaranteed as prescribed by law. Surrendering political refugees shall be prohibited. So that's a good um, political asylum. If you need political asylum, go to Tunisia. 
Article 27, a defendant shall be presumed innocent until proven guilty in a free trial where he or she is granted all guarantees of the right of defense through all phases of prosecution and trial. Article 28, punishment shall be individual and shall not be imposed unless by virtue of a legal provision issued prior to the occurrence of the punishable act except in the case of issuance of a more favorable provision for the defendant. Article 29, no person may be arrested or detained unless in flagrant delicto or by virtue of a judicial order. The person placed under arrest shall be immediately informed of his or her rights and the relevant charges. Relevant charges. The person may appoint a lawyer to represent him or her of the period of arrest and detention may be defined by law. Every prisoner shall have the right to humane treatment that preserves his or her dignity in executing a freedom depriving punishment. The state shall take into account the interest of the family and shall guarantee the rehabilitation and reintegration of the prisoner into society. Which is incredible to actually have that in the Constitution. I think that's genius. That's really smart. Article 31, freedom of opinion, thought, expression, media, and publication shall be guaranteed. These freedoms shall not be subject to prior censorship. And this is a, actually a fascinating one. So they got freedom of speech, but there's a, some, there's a blogger actually that's not allowed to, um, uh, who's going to go through to prison for three years. So Yassine Ayari, this is his page because of the things that he posted on his Facebook page, which, I mean, I don't know the exact words, but it doesn't seem flashy and it doesn't seem like in your face, you know, type of stuff. But they said that the military that was in charge was um, had some financial um, corruption. They was going to sell the land, uh, the military land for his own private gain or something. So he accused, you know, some specific individuals that are pretty powerful and they've been able to throw him in a year. Today's one-year prison sentence, prison sentence imposed on Yassin Ayari by a military court exposes the extent of the limits on freedom of expression in Tunisia. The London-based rights group Amnesty, um, <laughs> Amnesty International said it said that during the season when defense lawyers complained that journalists were not allowed to be present at the retrial, the court's president, who is a civil judge, responded by saying, this is not a court, this is a military barracks. So he was tried by a military court, and now he's going to go to jail. They said for one year at least. I've heard three years, one year, um, and they said that it, for defaming the military. So this is a shot at free speech. Um, just just because they have this issue doesn't mean I'm not still optimistic about uh, Tunisia's, um, you know, look at all the people that's protesting it. So there's actually more people that's protesting this guy is being locked up in prison than um, you know than when uh, Chelsea Manning got locked up. I didn't see too many people uh, protesting that. So here's another article that talks about him. He uh, made a series of messages on his Facebook page criticizing decisions made by the current Minister of Defense, uh, Ghazi Jaribi. His post referenced several recent military appointments and the resignation of a high-ranking military official. In one of his texts, Yari claimed that. Uh, Jirai Bai intends to sell land owned by the military. They then noted that the minister is serving under a limited mandate in the interim. Uh, so, again, it's, uh, you know, his claims provoked a backlash from the Tunis military court, which was ordered to a 1957 law, um, Article 91 of the Code of Justice, to indict Ayari and charge him with harming the dignity of the army and defending the army command with the effect of undermining military discipline. The idea behind this law is to intimidate anyone who tries to speak up. And uh, that's absolutely the case. You know, they are trying to do a new experiment in democracy, but I read that there is actually a high amount of Tunisians who want a strong hand versus a democratic setup. Here's what the guy looks like. This is Yassane Oyari, the Facebook blogger, the Facebook, the guy who's going to go to prison for several years for criticizing the military. And um, it, I don't hate him for criticizing the military because we saw with the Egyptian revolution, the military uh, killed the revolution. They, they were being, um, you know, uh, bragged about in the international press that how great they were upholding, you know, democratic virtues. But lo and behold, after the elections, they said, fuck your elections and fuck your government, you know, to the Egyptian people. And they went ahead and performed a coup d'etat had a faux presidential election, and now the uh, military general is president of Egypt. So I would, you know, um, I would err on the side of caution, actually, and say that he 
he could very well be right in the way that they're reacting. That that's even further indication of him being right. He, he said something they didn't like because not because it harmed their dignity, but because they um, they were going to sell the land, and now this guy has exposed them, and now that you know it, it it's going to backfire. If it was true, it's going to backfire on them um, because now I know, you know, I know what they're doing. Uh, I know that the military is corrupt as fuck because they threw this guy behind bars. So, you know, and uh, that that's sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy in some respects, right? Hey, don't you defame us. We're going to throw you behind bars because we're corrupt as fuck. But don't you call us corrupt because then you're going to be defaming us. And then, so if they do something bad, you know, is you can't defame the army. But if they do something bad, how can you say, hey, they did something bad without that, you know, sort of being defaming and um, and so it's a contradiction, especially with the you know the the Constitution that we just now read. You know, in Article Thirty One, you have the freedom of opinion, thought, expression, media, and publication shall be guaranteed. So it makes no sense for this uh, for this uh, Yar Yosemite um, Ar Arsan for Yasin Ayari for y yes Yasin Ayari. So, the state shall guarantee the right of information and the right to access to information. The state seeks to guarantee the right to access to communication networks. Article 33, academic freedoms and the freedom of scientific research shall be guaranteed. The state shall seek to provide the necessary resources to develop scientific and technological research. The rights to, that's how they got the, um, at uh, Xavier University, that's how they got, um, the uh, vagina monologues to play at the university was through the academic freedom. The rights to election, voting, and candidacy are, candidacy are guaranteed in accordance with the law. The state seeks to guarantee women's representation in elected councils. Article 35, the freedom to establish political parties, unions, and associations is guaranteed. Political parties, unions, and associations must abide in their internal charters and activities by the Constitution, the law, financial transparency, and the rejection of violence. Trade union rights are guaranteed, including the right to strike. This does not apply to the National Army. The right to strike does not apply to internal security forces and customs. Article 37, the right to peaceful assembly and the demonstration shall be guaranteed. Article 38, health is a right for every person. The state shall guarantee preventative health care and treatment for every citizen and provide the means necessary to ensure the safety and good quality of health services. The state has to ensure free health care for those who support and those who with limited income. It shall guarantee the right to social assistance as specified by law. Article 39, education shall be mandatory until at least the age of 16. The state shall guarantee the right to free public education at all stages and shall seek to provide the necessary means to achieve a high quality education and training as it shall work to embed youth in the Arab Islamic identity and their national belonging and strengthen and promote the Arabic language and expand its usage and install openness to foreign languages and human civilizations and the spread of culture of human rights. So much talk of human rights, you know. This is amazing. Article 40, work is a right for every citizen, male and female alike. The state shall take the necessary measures to ensure the availability of work on the basis of competence and fairness all citizens, male and female alike, shall have the right to adequate working conditions and to a fair wage. Article 41, the right to property shall be guaranteed and it shall not be interfered with except in accordance with the conditions and mechanisms stipulated by law. Intellectual property rights are guaranteed. Article 42, the right to culture shall be guaranteed. The right to culture, you know, the right to culture. The right to creativity shall be guaranteed. The state shall encourage cultural creativity and support national culture in its authenticity, diversity, and renewal in so as far as it promotes the values of tolerance, rejection of violence, and openness to different cultures and dialogue between civilizations. The state shall protect cultural heritage and guarantee the right of future generations to it. The state shall promote sports and shall seek to provide all the facilities necessary for the exercise of sports and leisure activities. The right to water shall be guaranteed. The conservation and the rational use of water shall be a duty of the state and society. It's Article 44. Article 45, the state guarantees the right to a sound and balanced environmental contribution to a sound climate. The state must provide the necessary means for combating environmental pollution. In Article 46, the state shall commit to protecting women's achieved rights and seek to support and develop them. The state shall guarantee equal opportunities between men and women in the bearing of all the various responsibilities 
in all fields. The state shall seek to achieve equal representation for women and men in elected councils. The state shall take the necessary measures to eliminate violence against women. I mean, that's incredible. Mitch McConnell didn't vote to stop violence against women. And um, equal representation, they will seek to achieve equal representation for men and women in elected councils. That's 50-50. I mean, right now, I think, what, we have like 10 of the 130 representatives are women in Frankfurt. This is a better thing. Getting more women into the process is a better thing. Article 47, children are entitled to be guaranteed dignity, health, care, and education from their parents in the state. The state shall provide all forms of protection to all children with no discrimination according to the best interest of the child. Article 48, the state shall protect persons with disabilities against any form of discrimination. Every disabled citizen shall have the right uh, to benefit based on the nature of the disability from all the measures guaranteeing their full integration into society. The state must take all necessary steps to ensure this. Article 49, the law shall determine the limitations related to the rights and freedoms that are guaranteed by this Constitution and their exercise on the condition that it does not compromise their essence. These limitations can only be put in place where necessary in a civil democratic state with the aim of protecting the rights of others or based on the requirements of public order, national defense, public health, or public morals, proportionality between these limitations and their motives must be respected. Judicial authority shall ensure that rights and freedoms are protected from all violations. No amendment that undermines any human rights acquisitions or freedoms guaranteed in this Constitution is allowed. Chapter 3, Legislative Power. Now they talked about the division of powers and how that's going to work. And really, that's that's the nuts and bolts of the thing, right? Is it a parliamentary system? Is it going to be, a, you know, the Bolivia? They had five branches of government, including an election branch and a media branch, in addition to, you know, the executive, legislative, and the judicial power. So, um, you know, I'm not going to read all this all throughout the, you know, the whole thing. But that um, to get into the, you know, the actual comparing and contrasting of constitutions. Personally, I would like to see a new constitutional convention in Kentucky. I would like to see the um, the uh, instant runoff voting mechanism employed so that way it doesn't discourage new people from jumping in and you don't waste your votes if you were to vote for an independent candidate. If the independent doesn't get the majority, then your vote is knocked down to your number two or three or four or five choice, depending on, you know, until the last man is remained standing. So you're allowed to vote for who you want to vote for, and if he doesn't get the majority, then your vote is knocked down to your second place choice. And if it goes to your second place choice, then that gives you a greater, you know, um, chance of picking the winner. Eventually, you know, um, the winner will be chosen. And so your vote isn't thrown away. Your vote is still very much there. So when people are, you waste your vote, you waste your vote. I've been seeing a lot of them giving peace signs. Tunisia President Monsef Marzouki and the head of the National Assembly have signed the, con the country's new constitution, adopting officially adopting a charter that is one of the last steps to full democracy after a 2011 uprising. With the birth of this text, we confirm our victory over dictatorship, Marzouki said in a speech to the Assembly on Monday before signing the document, which he embraced, waving the victory sign. So that was a good moment, you know, Monsef Marzouki was able to get the Constitution signed. And so they a lot of people are talking about it's not perfect, but it's better, and it's progress, and we're taking a step in the right direction. This Constitution is better than Kentucky's Constitution. I would even say better than the United States um, in terms of guaranteeing freedom, guaranteeing human rights, guaranteeing education. Education is not guaranteed in the United States Constitution. The U.S. Constitution also has a three-fifths clause Right, black people are only three fifths of a person. It's an old document, so you know to put it on a mantle and venerate it and worship it as if it's bigger than God. You know the Constitution is important because it sets the foundation for how we live our lives. And every constitutional professor or lawyer knows that all law comes out of the Constitution. They all do, every single one. And um, and so to venerate, you know, the document venerates itself. <laughs> it doesn't need anybody saying. I just loves this Constitution. I loves it. Uh, it's uh, you know, it's good because it's good, and it's bad because it's bad. So the it guarantees more freedoms. You saw all the freedoms that we were talking about in Tunisia: freedom of religion, freedom of movement, freedom um, to 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 create culture, the freedom to speak whatever language, whatever religion you want. Um, it's just all about freedom and people keeping their dignity. And they're talking about having the right to work and the equal, you know, uh, people in elected bodies, men and women. 
So there's a lot of stuff, and it says people with disabilities, um, you know, from discrimination, they they can't be discriminated against. Um, they have a right to a sound and balanced environment, contribution to a sound climate. They should provide the necessary means for combating environmental pollution. You know, this is a, there's an anti-EPA sediment here. The right to water shall be guaranteed. Conservation and rational use of water shall be a duty of the state and society. Water is important. We need to save water. And that's, that's going to be in their culture forever, to save water, to use water rationally. The state shall promote sports. You know, they're trying to get their citizens more athletic and more, um, you know, fit and in tone, you know. Um, so this is amazing stuff, and it didn't come without sacrifices, you know. There was a, during the Constituent Assembly, there have been several people who were killed and shot, and so people have died for this. It says, Tunisia is shocked by assassinations. The people who uh, Muhammad Brahmi and Chakrai belayed were both killed with the same gun. The same gun killed him, a 9mm. So Muhammad Bromney was killed by the same group and the same gun as killed his fellow leftist Chokri Belayed five months ago, according to the nation's embattled government. Interior Minister Latfi bin Judal said the two men were killed by a jihadi cell 14, four of whom were in custody, and that the 9mm bullets used in the attacks came from the same semi-automatic handgun. He alleged that the gunman is Abu Bakr Hakim, a 30-year-old French-born we weapon smuggler, who he said was known for jihadi sympathies. He added that police recently searched Hakim's home and found another handgun, explosives, and 90 rounds of ammunition. So they got a suspect, but still, there's two people who was in the constituent assembly who got shot, who was murdered, who was assassinated. So whatever ideas they were propounding, whichever ones they were trying to get you know, into the document, the right to education, you know, we don't have a right to education. The right to dignity, we don't have a right to dignity. Right to unionize, we don't have a right. Right now, you have Kentucky counties that are passing rights to not unionize, right? If a company is already unionized, they're passing laws that says that you don't have to join the union, you know? And the union are the ones that had negotiated the contract. I do believe in choice. You're not forced to be in a union, but, you know, that's the opposite. They're sitting there saying you have a right to join a union, and here they're sitting there saying you have a right to opt out of one. And so it's 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 a different type of freedom, um, and you should have a right to opt out. But if you're not part of the union, you know you should be shamed. You should be ashamed of yourself. I mean, unless the union was corrupt or was taking too many dues, you know, taking all the money for themselves. Here's the guy who got shot, Chakri Belayed, Tunisian lawyer and politician who is an opposition leader with the left secular Democratic Patriots movement. Belayed was a vocal critic of the Bin Ali regime prior to the 2011 Tunisian Revolution and of the current Islamist-led Tunisian government. On February 6, 2013, he was fatally shot outside his home in El Minza, close to the Tunisian capital Tunis. As a result of his assassination, Tunisian Prime Minister Hamadi Jabali announced his plan to dissolve the existing national government to form a temporary national unity government. So that's, um, you know, that's unfortunate, you know, for, he had to die for the Constitution to uh, be written, Chakri Belayed, and um, there's several, who killed him, right, who killed Chakri Belayed, and, um, and there's another guy too, which, uh, Mohammed Brahmi, so this guy was also killed, right here, with the hair and the mustache, a Tunisian politician, the founder and former leader of the People's Movement, which under his leadership won two seats in the constituent election in 2011. So he won two seats. And uh, his assassination, who was shot in Tunis outside his uh, Ariana home in front of his wife and children by two men on a motorcycle. He was shot 14 times and died later that day in the hospital in Ariana district of Tunis. Brahmi's death followed the assassination of opposition leader Chakri Belayed, killed February 6th. So it was only a few months later, and it was January 25th, right? So that's just two days after their 1952 Revolution Day. The two were members of the same left-wing coalition. Interior Minister Lofty Ben Jadal told a news conference the same 9mm automatic weapon that killed Belayed also killed Brahmi. The suspect in both murders were identified as Babakar Hakim, a Salafist being sold on suspicion of smuggling weapons in from Libya. And in the Salafi... Movement is a movement within Islam that references the Salafist doctrine known as Salafism. It takes its name from the term Salaf. Predecessors, ancestors used to identify the earliest Muslims who in its adherents believe 
provide the epitome of Islamic practice, a hadith which quotes Muhammad saying, the people of my own generation are the best, and then those who come after them, and then those of the next generation is seen as a call to Muslims to follow the example of those first three generations, the Salif. So it's just a radical Islamic movement. Um, here is the president, you know, the Binj Qaid Isepsi. He's the one that um, was ruling over the constituent assembly for a while, then he got elected. So here's the new president of Tunisia. They got a constitution one year ago, then they had um, uh, Congress elections, and they had a presidential election, then they had a presidential runoff election, which we don't have. We don't have runoff elections, you know. The instant, uh, instant runoff voting thing would be basically a runoff election happening five times in one vote instead of having a whole separate election. But the idea is to make sure that they're the actual people's candidate. If you have five people in um, in office or in the uh, running to become president, that means you know some of the smaller uh, figures might siphon votes off from the bigger ones. And so, how do you actually know if that was the one that people really wanted? You know, if everybody voted, if all the people who voted for the say there's two main candidates and everybody who voted for the other three candidates, then if they were to pile all their votes together, it would have gone to the, the loser instead of the winner. So anyways, it's sort of complicated, but my point is just because somebody gets like 40% of the vote doesn't mean that they're the candidate that the majority of the people actually want. They could very much dislike that candidate and uh, vote, voting for anybody else but him. And then splitting the vote, he ends up you know slipping on through and winning. So... Obama, Tunisia, BG, Kad, Epsepsi, this is the president again, and that's pretty much, that's the gist of the, uh, you know, Tunisian revolution, it was successful, it happened in 2011, and Ben Ali was, he ran, you know, they, they ran him out, he had, um, Ben Ali actually got in there under some sort of, a coup d'etat, they called it a medical coup d'etat. So he was able to get into the presidency because of the leaders being sick, and he went ahead and stepped into his chair. It was like, ah, fuck it, I'm, I'm president now. And they called it a medical coup d'etat, and then they said that all progress was set back when Ben Ali got in there. So Ben Ali eventually was ousted after the, you know, the Jasmine Revolution. And, um, and so that's the, the, you know, the thing was free, right? Then they were free. Um, November 7th, 1987, doctors attending to Borguba filed an official medical report declaring him medically incapacitated and unable to fulfill the duties of the president. Uh, presidency. Ben Ali, as the next in line to the presidency, removed Borguba from office and assumed the presidency himself. The day of his accession to power was celebrated annually in Tunisia as New Era Day. Two of the names given to Ben Ali's rise to the presidency include the medical coup d'etat, in the Tunisian Revolution, Ben Ali favored the latter. In conformity with Article 57 of the Tunisian Constitution, the peaceful transition occurred. The country had faced 10% inflation, external debt accounting for 46% of the GDP, and a debt service ratio of 21% of GDP. In 1999, Fulvio Martini, former head of the Italian Military Secret Service, SISMI declared a parliamentary committee that in 1985 to 1987 were organized in a kind of golpe. So anyways, that's that's how he got in. The medical coup d'etat, and that's how he got in. The medical coup d'etat. So eventually they kick his ass out, and then, you know, the hard work of the, of the revolution is over, but now you got to establish something new. You kicked out the dictatorship, you kicked out the totalitarian fascist bastards, but what did you put in its place? And uh, I read that democracies are more enduring when there's uh, constitutions, you know, enacted. You, with the constitution, you consolidate the revolution, and then w if you have believe in democratic virtues, the, a democracy can last longer if it is consolidated. So revolutions help democracy, but don't always guarantee a democracy. In fact, some people say that this election of this president was because most Tunisians wanted a strong arm. Sure, they believed in democracy, but they started to lose faith in democracy by how the Islamists were sort of being bullies um, in the very beginning of it. And so, uh, you know, they wanted a strong arm, a good man with a strong arm. And so that's a little bit different. You know, a republic is what they got, and that republic is what they want, you know, with democratic virtues. A republic is nothing but a representative democracy. It's the same thing. Look at the definition of the word. It's the exact same thing. A republic means you voted for people to represent you. So it's still based on the consent of the governed, which are democratic principles. Democracy is just we, the people, run this, um, the government. 
you know, and we don't actually run the government. We just choose our representatives in America. Uh, so the representative, you know, democracy is the republic. So, you know, people want to be like, hell, I don't want to choose. I don't want to have a damn decision in my government. I'd rather vote for that asshole to go ahead and choose from me. That's that's the best way. <laughs> really? You wouldn't want to decide on where your tax dollars get spent. You don't want to have a decision in what laws are passed, what laws are not passed. You know, I would actually be more in favor. California, Oregon, Washington, a lot of these states have like nine or ten issues on the ballot every year for the people to vote on. We don't get any issues in Kentucky. Not a single fucking issue is ever given to us on the ballot. You know, we are given no decisions whatsoever. Tweedledee or Tweedledum and then go back home, you stupid young one. You know, that's all we fucking choose. And it's bullshit because if the people voted... I think that, you know, I believe in the people. I believe most of the time, like, the majority of the people are against war, unjust war. Majority of people don't like to see poor people. Majority of people don't, you know, the the um, ideals of the masses are better and more um, profound than the elites. The elites, they get power and they say, well, I'm going to do as the fuck as I please and fuck everybody. Now, is that the kind of leader you want? Just someone who says, fuck everybody? It's not what I want. So I believe in uh, democratic virtues. I believe in a republic also. Um, but I think we can get as much democracy in there as possible. The Occupy movement actually had the ideal standard for what it was to be democratic. And the ideal standard was a consensus-based democracy, meaning every person, it had to be a unanimous decision. Every person in that room should be happy with the decisions. If somebody had, you know, had a problem with it, the whole meeting would get held up until that person was satisfied for, you know, with what they wanted. And, um, and so, you know, it, that's the ideal standard. You know, if you had a fucking Mitch McConnell just being an obstructionist asshole, well, you know, fuck him and then just get your shit passed and, and you know, get on with your day. Um, but the, um, you know, the ideal standard is a good one to live by. I think eventually it'd be majority rules. Minority get their say and the majority get their way. And that's the way it should be. Um, there was, um, the Tunisians were hailing their constitution and the ceremony was not without incident though. So once they had the constitution, they invited everybody to come join with them. But, um, U.S. diplomats walked out when Iran's parliamentary speaker, Ali Lar Ejani, accused the U.S. and Israel of seeking to prevent the Arab Spring revolutions from succeeding, which is actually phenomenal. I thought the CIA actually has a hand into it, but with them sitting there criticizing them and then the United States walking out. That almost makes it sound like they had nothing to do with it, and they tried to stop them from winning. And um, and also, one thing about the Constitution of Tunisia was that they had, um, you know, they're protecting the Palestinians in one of the uh, articles. So they were saying, you know, in solidarity with the Palestinians. So Palestine got written into a document, into a constitutional charter. So, you know, I hope the Palestinian people themselves survive. But even if they don't, they'll always be forever remembered in Tunisia's revolution. Much like how America remembers the French and how the French helped us in our revolution. <laughs> yeah, right. Americans don't even know that the French helped us in the revolution. They don't even know why Louisville's name Louisville, where the, the Statue of Liberty even came from. Uh, there's not an appreciation of the French and for French culture here. So, the hands of Israel and the United States have tried to render these revolutions sterile and to make them deviate from their course so that Israel can benefit. The U.S. Embassy later denounced Larry Johnny's comments as false and inappropriate. Ooh, inappropriate. Now, that's rough. What was intended to be a ceremony honoring Tunisia's achievements was used by the Iranian representative as a platform to denounce the United States. Whatever, who gives a shit? I mean, seriously, you're, you're invited there. Just sit and fucking enjoy your fucking meeting. <laughs> Um, here's some more about the Constitution being passed. The National Constituent Assembly um, from October 23rd, 2011 until January 26, 2014. So nearly two, three years. Constitution written word by word, article by article, under the scrutiny of observers of civil society, media, and you know people from all over the world. So it was finally adopted in its entirety on January 26, 2014. So one year tomorrow. Mark an historic event in the process of democratic transition, but the drafting of this constitution has always been easy, and the NCA plenary sessions have always been smooth. All right, we're going to talk about Muhammad Brahmi uh, dying. So, you know, that's that's pretty much the overall gist. Um, I think, let's see, there's another thing with the blogger that was thrown in jail. Obama uh, makes a phone call to 
um, Eb Sissy and says, hey, kick ass or um, S. Sebsi. S. Sebsi. So President S. Sebsi was um, elected to be the president. Obama says, hey, what's up, my brother? All right, calls him up and congratulates him, you know, maintaining diplomatic relations. Um, the Tunisia blogger was convicted in a military court. All right, it's the same blogger, but still, you know, it shows that they have not embraced uh, freedom of speech just yet, and um, and they should get on with it, right? They shouldn't, you know. I, there's nothing that he could have wrote on Facebook that would have warranted him being, unless he was threatening to do them harm. But if he just said, "Hey, they're liars," get get him out of jail, because now now I know you're a bunch of fucking liars, right? He says, you're liars. Oh, you call me a liar, but now you're in jail. Why'd you put me in jail? Well, you know, I lied, and I didn't want everybody to know that I'm a liar. And you was like, hey, you're a liar. And, you know, that really pissed me off because you was like, you outed me being a liar. The Islamist Party in Nada, with the second largest number of seats in the assembly, had sought a unity government with Nidia Tunes to improve stability with the new government set to crack down the Islamist militants to tackle economic reforms. Um, another opposition activist assassinated, right? Chakri Belayed. We'd already mentioned the two who had got um, sacrificed. Let's see, or got killed or assassinated. The uh, Constitution of Tunisia. Um, I wonder if it says like some big overlays on Wikipedia about if it's a parliamentary system. You know, it says um, a constituent assembly was, you know, uh, put up and then they, okay, then they're happy. During the drafting process, the main points of contention were the role of religion in the government, the requirements to run for president, and the details of how the transition period after the document was passed would be handled. The new constitution makes Tunisia a decentralized and open government. It recognizes Islam as the official state religion, but protects freedom of belief. It provides for some restrictions on free speech, most notably in banning attacks on religion and accusations of being a non-believer. The Constitution provides for gender equality and rights and responsibilities, protects the nation's natural resources, and demands the government take steps to fight corruption. Executive power is divided between the president and the prime minister. A newly selected cabinet led by former minister Midai Joma will oversee the country until elections are held to select a president. And the parliamentary election was held October 26, 2014. So that's a that's a big day right there, too. So, yeah, Tunisia is an example of how the uh, revolution was able to consolidate themselves. And now that, the, that they're consolidate, uh, my predictions for Tunisia will that they will have many blessings from here on until posterity. Um, they will have a democratic system and it will continue to be democratic. They will still have bouts between conservative, liberal, keeping things the same, changing things. And that will be a friction that will be there till end of all time. They've been able to establish an Islamic state, but that guarantees freedom of religion. And so there's some things with um, you know accusing people of being a non-believer, which I guess is uh, akin to apostasy. You know that could be a death warrant. It could be a death sentence for somebody. So they're saying you cannot you know accuse somebody of being a non-believer and possibly getting them killed, especially if you have no evidence to the thing. Um, so you know that that seems I don't know, I don't want to say reasonable, but it seems like we do have freedom of speech to say what we want, our opinions. But when it comes to threats. When it comes to accusations, when it comes to orders, you know, direct orders, you must do as I tell you. Nah, fuck off. That's that's the idea of freedom of speech. And um, in a free country, you know, we have to tolerate a lot of stupid ass bullshit. But I wonder if someone came up and called my, you know, my wife a bitch, could I fucking knock that piece of shit in, on his ass? Um, in a free country, you're not allowed to, right? He was he was allowed to be insulting. But I wouldn't see any jury really convicting a person who done something like that. Um, and, you know, for the other things, too, for threats or accusations, if somebody just came up and said, you're a thief and you stole all this stuff. And I was like, damn, you're accusing me of it, you know, so is this going to go to, you got proof, you got evidence, where is this going to go? Um, accusations, you can't just pull out of your ass. And then, um, let's see, uh, threats, if you said that you're going to hurt somebody, you can't put somebody in perpetual fear that they're, you're going to do damage. You know, a threat is a future you know, harm will happen, future damage or harm is going to happen. So, 
and um, you know, what was the other and direct orders you know there's a supposedly if a cop gives you a lawful order you know tells you to sit down on the curb or whatever you have to do it but if they tell you to like take off your clothes or something then you don't have to do it but if it's just you and the cop and he's used to being boss all the fucking time I can see him being like do this do that now you know come into this room and take off your clothes and aha that one woman, you know, um, she said she wanted a, another person in the room with her when he was trying to check her out or, uh, you know, see if she had weapons. Um, and the judge totally ignored it, pretend like the shit wasn't even going down, you know, it wasn't even happening. Eventually she was awarded like $200,000 or some shit. But still, that was bullshit that she had to fucking go through all that, you know. And, um, and so direct orders and plus what about if you're not a cop, if a homeless person just says, Hey, sit down on the curb. Oh no, no, I'm fucking conducting. I'm the authority around here. And it's like, I don't know, man, you're, you're homeless. So I'm, how are you the authority? Well, this is my part. Okay. All right. Chill out, man. I have to do what the fuck he says. No, you don't have to do whatever anybody fucking orders you to do. That's the thing about a free country. Someone to say, pick that up and you say, fuck off. You know, that's the thing about a free country. And I would, I do err uh, towards freedom than over, you know, security. I, I think you need both. Um, but in a free country, we would see that, you know, people get into conflicts. People get into scuffles. Arguments happen. But we also go on. We can't stop. Everybody's lives cannot stop just because two people couldn't get along. Um, and especially if there's like property or money that's on the line, you know, that stuff needs to be figured out. And so... You know, I love free speech. Free speech is my thing, and um, and and I believe in free speech. I believe in free speech nearly to its maximum point. But I could see, you know, reasonable objections to um, sort of it being too much. If I'm reading a book by a tree, you know, a public tree, and someone just starts calling me a bitch fifty million times, that's some bullshit. Even if uh, you know they have a right to say call people names. Um, I have to listen to this shit. I'm trying to read a fucking book. How can I concentrate when people sitting there buzzing in my ear? If you're buzzing in my ear, I can't fucking think about things. And so, you know, um, I need to concentrate. And if you're buzzing in my ear, I, I feel like I need to be freedom free from speech too. <laughs> you know? Um, so I don't know. There's billboards, uh, on the internet and advertisements, TV, people can put whatever they want to radio. And then you just have to be subjected to it. Uh, but, um, you know, especially in the, like the privacy of my own home or something. I mean, if you're in the public park, I don't know if I could stop that guy from just calling me names. Um, even though it would be rude, it would be total bullshit, you know. And if he did call me a bitch, I, you know, if he could hit my, if uh, someone called my wife a bitch and I could hit them, could I hit somebody if they called me a bitch? And, um, and I don't know. I think you would have to say, do you want to fight? You'd have to consent to the fight and then it would have to go from there. But if you just called someone the name then that's, um, I think that should be okay. I mean, it's abusive and it's bullshit and it attacks someone's dignity, um, but it's not a crime. So, anyways, just me parsing out uh, freedom of speech with uh, dignity because we have a right to dignity, you know, being proud of yourself, being dignified, and I wish that there was a bigger culture of dignity and being proud of oneself because I, there's no way that people would just suck the boss's dick and just be so happy with, you know, that being their life. Hey, what's your life? Oh, I suck the Koch brothers dick for fucking corporate funds. That's what I do for a living. That's my livelihood, sucking Koch brothers dicks. Wow. Mm, you don't have no pride in yourself? Nope, not at all. My name's Mitch McConnell. I suck Koch brother dick like a motherfucker. That's why they kicked me out of Fort Knox for sodomy. You know, I've been sucking dick since I've been in the military. Since they kicked me out of the military, I've been sucking dick. I'm motherfucking Mitch McConnell. That's who the fuck I am. You know, I'm all about being someone's Uncle Tom, you know, bitch, someone's Uncle Tom obedient bitch, someone's house Negro. Yes, Massa. Yes, Mammy Jane. Yes. Yes, Coke Brother Mammy Jane. I'll do what you want, Coke Brother Mammy Jane. So it's just a attack on hierarchy. But if I saw working class peoples that actually had, were proud of themselves, then we could uh, organize and have solidarity and be proud of one another, be proud of each other instead of uh, being a bunch of slaves who fight over each other for masses love. Be proud of your own fucking self, man. You don't need masses approval to be a fucking person. Just be proud and love yourself. Keep them shoulders up. Uh, love yourself. Protect yourself. You're, you are your own best ally. And nobody can liberate you. You gotta liberate your own goddamn self.